Today, let's have an open chat on crypto assets because if you see the charts, horrific performance. In fact, of this time of filming 19 June, you realize that the prices have dipped yet again. So Ethereum decline has been about 80% already. For myself, I invested the bulk of my Ethereum somewhere in the middle. I shared on a previous video before that I'll be accumulating one Ethereum coin every week. I've done so. That was during this period in February and March of 2022 this year. But from then to now, you realize it's still a 65% decline. Now today I have an interesting question for you to start things with. If you bought $100,000 at the top and it's declined 80%, and for myself I bought somewhere in the middle, but it's still declined 65%. The difference in terms of loss is about 15,000, correct? One has lost 80,000, one has lost 65,000. My curious question to you is, if Ethereum coin does go back up, how does that look in terms of the P&L for each individual investor? So if you are curious, we'll touch on that topic towards the end of this discussion. Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'll be sharing with you my thought process, my journey, as well as what I'll be doing for myself so that hopefully it gives you some food for thought. Now my own journey started somewhere in October 2021. For myself, I believe Ethereum coins are the most blue chip to get a Bitcoin in all crypto assets. So we as laymen, my suggestion has always been with go with the blue chip names. We don't know what would survive the carnage, but the blue chip ones, I'm pretty sure will still be around. They will still thrive. They'll build the whole blockchain ecosystem. So for my own, I do what I preach. I went with Ethereum coins, 12, and then I went one coin per week for 10 weeks. My plan at the start in terms of buying Ethereum coins was really generational asset. Because the more I explored NFTs, you know, I mentioned I'll be thinking of doing a Josh Tan NFT next year, but now with all the carnage, I think there wouldn't be too much demand with this kind of market sentiment. But as I looked in terms of NFTs and the whole development, I realized Ethereum is really a foundation layer. We don't be too smart about it. This is what it is. Ethereum has a market lead. It's unassailable, at least for the foreseeable years ahead. And the more I realized this, the more I realized that the next generation will use blockchain way more than what we have. So I wanted to buy a generational asset and I wanted to get myself some coins to give to them for their future transaction. You know, it's a bit like buying land in Singapore in 1970s. You don't know if Singapore will be developing to a first world country or not, but if our grandfather had bought some land somewhere, uh, very, very easily would be pretty well off, correct? And in any case, today I'm filming is Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all fathers out there. So I followed through with my plan, I bought, and as you see in this journey, as of April, I've already accumulated my goal of more than 20 coins. I want to give at least 10 coins to each of my sons. My overall target was 20 to 30 coins. I calculated I'll be pretty comfortable uh, even if they hit south. That size uh, fits me in terms of being something sizable, something material. So it's not like you buy half a coin and it doesn't move your needle. I always believe investments, you don't have too broad. You must believe what you own and uh, it must be sizable. So you are willing to keep track. And as of 5th of May, I actually made my last purchase. So the question is, why did I actually buy half a coin more on 5th of May? This is why I saw a slight bounce on the Ethereum price itself. At the point of time, the bear has ran for quite a long while already. And this to me looked like a design that has sucked out the bears already. And then it could rally. So same as China Tech, I thought that was the end of the bear. And I went in a half a coin more just to add on more to the total holding, still within the 30 day itself. But lo and behold, that was actually a fake out and then it headed much lower. You know, I've mentioned before on this channel on the psychology of investors. At this point of time, I'm also calling Ethereum the blue chip of blue chip. As a little bit of my journey, I, I kind of regret how I approach things a bit because I can't value a crypto asset. I shared before, uh, this has no price on its expansion. There's no there's nothing that, that fits my usual method of investing that I'm looking out for that's given me results. So this, I could only think of it as generational asset. And when I didn't have any trading discipline to it, when it cracked to a low, I didn't have any exit. I didn't have any cut loss. On hindsight, I kind of regret whether I should have hung on with that new idea of generational wealth. 
I haven't done generational wealth thing. I'm not like some wealthy family son. No, no, no. I'm pretty much like you. So generation wealth is something that seems quite nice to me. I, I don't know how to value this. I think I keep that for the generation. It's definitely going to be well off. But I think it's pretty stupid looking back on hindsight. And uh, I wish I could have done things a bit different. I, I wish I didn't put myself in such a box whereby I don't know what to do with it. I'm holding on to it. And look what now. Uh, definitely doesn't make sense to exit as of this moment already. Some positives from this journey. While it is wrong to not have any exit, maybe you profits down the years, I don't know. But not doubling down when the ship sank is very important. You know, very often we catch falling knives. We double down, double down. That is a gambler's mindset. If you realize that, that swells the position and that would destroy the profit loss statement for the year. Yes, this loss is painful. If you see the sizing, you kind of can guess how much I've lost already. But sticking to that discipline, I was forecasting 20 or 30 coins. I stuck to it. The process is right. The discipline is right. It's just the generation asset. I, I, I think I'm not ready. Or rather, that has not yielded me results. Why am I thinking in the direction? What we've seen from the Ukraine-Russian war is that when banking system fails, crypto assets can still be sent as long as there's internet access. I think that probably because of that, the correlation to general equities might be different because this is a very unique asset class. But if you see in this chart over here, you realize that the correlation in terms of performance recently has been very similar to US tech. So having covered that, let me share with you what I'll be doing. And before you get there, help me smash the like button because it's taken our team hours to produce this sharing with you. And hopefully it has some useful points for you to take away further and decide what to do for yourself. I believe this whole crypto asset winter is going to be here for quite a long while. My best guess looking at yesteryears is at least 2-3 years. I have a friend who's big in the NFT space. Same age as me, he's retired already so you kind of can guess how much money he's made of crypto assets. He bought the Bot Apes NFT very early so that has yielded him big returns. But from that discussion I realized leverage in the crypto space is actually bigger than what I thought. I thought very few people are tapping on it. And as I talk around and as I hear comments, I realize the leverage factor used in owning crypto assets is huge. And what we can see is right now, this moment, there's another distress coming about. Three Arrows Capital, which is actually from Singapore, they are reportedly having big losses and there could be some asset sales. So if you look at what they are doing in terms of decentralized finance and supporting projects, they are going to make a negative sentiment on everything. And as Warren Buffett has said before, when tide goes down, we can see who's swimming naked. So with the leverage needing to be unwind, I think the bear market could be here for years. And just in case you haven't seen recent news, there's a big platform, Celsius, which has got into problems. This really reinforces to me as an investor that regulation is really important. If Celsius, a big platform, is in trouble right now, I can't imagine who else is next in line. This whole decentralized finance DeFi, in my opinion at least, has filled the greed of capitalism. When people can build businesses without cross-checks from authorities, when people can pull in monies without any cross-checks, there are bound to be frauds, there are bound to be unfairness done to retail space. So for me, I'm really hoping the crypto space has regulation. I think that is the only way we can see new sprouts coming through. And with this Celsius saga, my take looking at it from the surface is there is an urgency to move out my Ethereum coins from platforms. I've been staking it and that's why I went to buy a Ledger wallet to actually try to move it out already. So actually, if you see over here, I paid express for shipping. When I spoke to friends last time, they suggested it and uh, I was just too tired, too lazy to buy a wallet and right now I'm paying extra shipping costs. That tells you the urgency that I have in moving our platforms. I think trust part needs time to be healed and I don't want to risk it. I'm comfortable owning the coins since I wanted it as a generation asset. Let's stick with it and see how it goes 10 years later. But as of now, I don't want it to be lost. So my simple ob objective now is to move it out into a cold wallet. And if I'm not too sure what to do, look for some of the simplest ones. And as always, from what I hear from most of my friends in this space, always buy directly. Don't buy from third-party merchants because you don't get your wallet compromised in any case. So, you know, at the start of the video, I ask this question. If we both started with $100,000 invested, one at the peak, one at the middle, both have big losses. Right now, if Ethereum goes back to 5,000 USD per coin, 
what does it look for each p l Someone who has entered at 4,800 would see barely a break even, correct? But someone who has entered around 2009 would have seen a big, big gain already. Do you realize something? In a downturn, your entry price doesn't really matter that much. Everybody is big in the losses. But if you entered at a lower point, if it turns up, that's where you see the difference in terms of gains are massive. Because the average price that you purchase your coin is very different from me and very different from someone who bought right at the very peak. Think about that point. If you don't have crypto assets, are they worthy of you to put some allocations towards it? Leave your thoughts and comments in the sections below. Investive as always, hopefully this sharing is of benefit to you. With that, I'll sign off from this and see you in the next video. Take care and goodbye.